So, this is a quick little video to show uh, people how to move from Papercut's internal Derby database to an external database. In this case, it's called, we're going to use SQL. Uh, it's prompted by a telephone call we had this morning from a reseller wishing to do much the same for a customer of theirs, and I thought it'd be a good idea just to uh, put it up on YouTube. So, uh, the process is uh, over four steps, and Papercut recommend it's going to take you about 15 to 30 minutes, and all of this is covered in chapter 19 of the manual, which you can search for online at papercut.com. So, the first step really is to back up the existing data within Papercut, which I've already done just to save some time, and I have that stored here. Uh, I renamed it to backup.zip, normally it has a timestamp as its file name, but backup.zip is just easier to work with for now. And it's on the root of the C so I can easily find it. And then we need to create and initialize the new database. So this is all done via SQL. So we've got a trial of SQL 2000 and uh, something. Let's have a look. 2008 installed, R2. And we've called a new database, Papercut DB. Uh, SQL probably, if it isn't already set up, is going to take you the longest amount of time to actually uh, set up here from this entire process. But once you get the hang of it, it's fairly simple. So, with that database created, we need to initialize it and then import the information from the old database into the new and then get everything back up and running again. So, the real steps here we stop Papercut NG or MF or whatever we're working with, which is called Papercut. As you can see, I've got my app server and print provider stopped. And then we need to perform a backup, which we've already done, and we need to create a new database and basically this is going to tell you how to create databases um, once that is done and obviously I'm not going to show you how I made a SQL database this is a bit time consuming we need to wander off to wherever we installed Papercut and check out the server.properties file so our Papercut is installed here the server file and we've got server.properties so we've opened that up we'll scroll down a little bit there's all sorts of stuff you can do in here, but what we're interested in is database settings. So, I've commented this out basically to say to Papercut we're not using the internal database anymore, so it doesn't bother trying to use that. And then we just need to quickly check some code here. So, SQL Server, uh, the name of our server is called Itchy, and the name of the database is called Papercut DB. So, that's fairly simple to put in. Uh, the username of the as a user with access to you know read and write into that database is papercut and the password is just below that in the database dot password equals field I'm not going to show you the password because it's a secret so once that is saved we go back to the instructions and we scroll down a little bit it's basically telling you what you have to do for every little bit of uh, SQL as is all and other databases Oracle, MySQL, etc. Now, we need to initialize the database. So we need to run the command prompt and we'll run it as administrator. And it's going to tell us to navigate to wherever the server binaries folder is. So it's giving you an example here of where it lives on Windows. Our folder there is a little bit different as so we're not running Papercut NG plus we're on a 64 bit virtual machine. So to save some time, I've pre written this out. So I'm just copy and paste that in. Here we go. And then it's going to ask us to run the following command, which is basically database tools and initialize the database. No worries. So it's going to go and initialize the database that we've talked about in server.properties. Here's that. Now, assuming this doesn't give us any errors, which it doesn't, it basically just says successfully initialized database. It's all good. We need to now import or load the data from the old database into the new one. So once again, there's an example here where it's telling us to go to this folder and run DB tools import database so basically it's the database tools and we're going to run the import command and we're going to select our backup so let's just grab that code that's the important one I'm going to paste that in there and then we will cheat and copy that in. So basically it's database tools, just run an import database command and it's going to go look and see what the root will see for backup.zip which as previously discussed is our current backup of my existing papercut install. So let's copy and paste that in 
and what we should see here assuming everything is set up correctly is it's going to create a load of tables and rows and things like that in the new database there you go so that didn't take that long but you know in fairness my installer paper cut on this particular machine doesn't have a lot in it uh, any sensible user you know a normal site it's going to take a I don't know, take up to a minute, maybe more to import all the information. It just depends how much information you've got in the database. So, once that has been done, and there were no errors, which there weren't, which is all good, um, we can basically move on and restart the services. So, I'll load up the services and we'll start the application server and we'll start the print provider. Basically, and if this isn't going to work, uh, paper cuts probably not going to work or load up. So, as a little side note, the application server is the pretty side of paper cut. It's the admin interface which allow you to change all your rules, filters, you know, quotas, volume queues, things like that. The print provider is the ugly bit that does all the grunt work, which you never really see, and that basically reads all the print jobs, changes things, does this and that, moves them over to different queues, etc. So, giving that enough time to start up go and access the admin interface so it's a good sign that it's loading up let's log on with the password and you'd like to think that there would be some information here so there you go and it's got our information so it's not using the internal database anymore it's using an external one and check the app log doesn't seem to be too many problems there you go yeah that works no worries okay thank you very much for listening bye bye